Hello there, so this is the Yukitel K8000, the latest battery monster made by Yukitel. It's priced around 180 euros, bargain or not, the review will tell you about that. But before the review, let's just have a closer look at the very first impressions. So the body of the Yukitel K8000 is entirely made from metal. It's a unibody metal design and it's actually very nice to see Yukitel using such a design now because um, back in the days they always pretty much always used metal bodies but with plastic caps and well that's not up to today's standard looks kind of cheap feels kind of cheap so it's great they finally are using a fully CNC crafted unibody design so on the rear we see a dual camera which of course is a fake one so just ignore this secondary sensor here um, we also have a dual LED flash some antenna lines on the top and bottom we have a Yukitel logo then on the sides on the bottom we find speaker grills or to be more exact one is a speaker grill the other one is a microphone grill and then we unfortunately have a micro USB port there would have been nice to get a type C port it's kind of sad that some phone makers still randomly use those micro USB ports um, it just messes up cable management. I think Type-C should be the only standard these days. Having a look at the right side, we find the hardware buttons. Those are made from metal and surprisingly do not rattle at all. They sit in place tightly, which is great. It's a volume rocker and a power button with a red highlight, as you can see. This is usually typical for Elephone. I'm surprised that Yukita used something like that now. And surprise, surprise, we have a 3.5mm headphone jack on the top. Great to see. So all those not in love with Type-C to 3.5mm adapters will love this one for sure. And then here on the right side we have, uh, sorry, on the left side of course, we have the um, SIM tray, which takes either two nano SIM cards or one nano SIM card and one micro SD card. The front is covered by flat glass, no 2.5D glass. And as you can see, we have um, the phone call receiver on the top, as well as a front camera, a status LED, and of course, the light and proximity sensors over here. The bezels are, well, reasonably slim. Not the thickest. For a battery monster, they are actually quite okay. And below the screen we find a home button, which isn't a physical one, just, just a touch sensitive surface with embedded fingerprint scanner. And as you can see, the fingerprint scanner works quite well. It's not the fastest, but it works reliable. Just a short touch and I'm in. That's great to see. 
Now one of those things that make the Yukitel K8000 a special phone is that it packs a AMOLED screen. And that's actually great because battery monsters usually come with LCD panels, but since those phones are about battery life, an AMOLED panel actually makes much more sense because it uses much less power, of course. And so it's great to see that they are using a AMOLED panel here. It's not a very good one though, you shouldn't expect too much from it. I mean the picture is okay and in some aspects it's still better than an LCD panel in terms of deep blacks, contrast and of course colors and also brightness can get really high there, look at that. But um, it has some issues like a some kind of graininess in, in white areas or gray areas when the screen brightness is turned to a lower level. So if you already had a phone that uses a POLED screen, for example the Xiaomi Mi Note 2, you already know what I mean. This is how the screen looks. Um, so yeah, not a major issue, just a tiny little optical flaw. And also it's just a 720p panel, so you definitely can see pixels. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see it. So there you go. You can see the pixels, it's not too bad. I mean, if you get used to the lower pixel density, you pretty much don't notice it anymore with a normal viewing distance. But still, would have been great to see a Full HD screen there. On the other hand, 720p of course uses less energy, so it also has a pro to it. And as you can see, the screen isn't a 18x9 panel, it's a 16x9 panel, so those of you who don't love the 18x9 panels will surely like this phone. So the K8000 runs on a MediaTek MT6750T, which we know very well by now, and it's fairly well optimized. So the system, most of the part, runs very smooth. There are pretty much no stutters, just in more demanding applications there might be some minor stuttering. All in all, it's not the best performing phone with this processor. The Yukitel K5000, for example, is a little bit better, but still, it's enough for daily use, I don't complain about that. And even gaming is possible to a certain degree there. In terms of RAM and memory, we are running on 4GB of LPDDR3 RAM. And we have 64GB of internal memory there, which is quite a lot. So you don't necessarily need to use a micro SD card, which of course would eat up one of the dual SIM slots. And then what's nice to see is that we have quite a lot of sensors in there. We've got the accelerometer, magnetometer, orientation, gyroscope, light proximity, even a step counter is there and it actually does work. And rotation vector sensors, gravity sensor and linear acceleration. So everything important is there and works quite well. Even the compass, I can show you that in Google Maps real quick. So let's try that. And as you can see, the automatic map alignment works and it actually is accurate. I am pointing right to the street now and as you can see, the map does as well. Software-wise, the Yukitel K8000 runs on Android 7.0 and we've got a rather up-to-date security patch level from November 2017, which is also great to see. There have been no OTA updates so far, but updates are supported. There is an extra application for that. There we go. So updates should work. But as this phone is very new, there have been no updates so far. And as you can see, the Android is mostly stock for the most part. The launcher has been changed a little. The icons look a little different. But besides of that, it's normal stock Android. There is a power saving theme for the AMOLED panel to make the settings black. If you dislike this, you can of course also disable this by going into battery and disable the dark power saving skin. And there are some extra settings for various gestures and all that stuff. And we also have a one hand mode available. Reception quality of mobile networks seems mid-range so far. Haven't done any in-depth testing yet. Phone call quality is okay. The earpiece gets kinda loud. Um, and quality also is mid-range. The wireless performance is outstanding. Till today I have never seen a ABGN 
supporting phone reaching 105 Mbit per second in downstream right next to the router. So that's quite insane. Great result there. And also one floor below the router, still a very good result. So the Wi-Fi performance is pretty good on this phone here, which is again nice to see. GPS seems a, a little bit weak in the dry test here, haven't done any reuse of it yet. Um, it only gets GPS satellite it seems, and no GLONASS satellites, which is kind of sad, but that doesn't mean that it has to perform bad or something like that. Um, the accuracy of it is pretty good, 3.4 meters, nothing to complain about that, of course it could be better, but um, well, it always depends on your use case if you need that or not. For normal tracking and navigation, 3.4 meters is totally sufficient. So yeah, we will see in the full review how well it does with tracking and navigation tasks. The media speaker of the UKTEL K8000 um, sounds okay but not perfect. It's pretty loud but sounds a little too flat. There are a tiny bit of basses but really not that much, so mostly it sounds flat. Um, but it doesn't scratch or, or, or overdrive the speaker at high volume, which is a plus. So it doesn't sound really bad, but it could sound better. Um, the headphone jack on the other hand sounds pretty good. It's very clear and loud. Not as loud as some high-end phones with dedicated amplifiers and such stuff, but totally sufficient and also pretty clear and well balanced. Not too much basses, but they are there. Um, overall, sounds totally fine. and. Audio via Bluetooth works fine as well, I've already tested that. Camera-wise, I haven't tested the phone that intensively till today. Only have taken a few snapshots um, at daylight. The performance actually doesn't look too bad there on the screen. There might be a little bit of graininess, but it's not too bad. The amount of detail is surprisingly high, considering that I have zoomed in a lot right now. Um, yeah, so camera at daylight doesn't seem to be the worst, but um, in low light it could perform better. Both the rear and front cameras you can see, looks kind of foggy and grainy. And also when recording videos in low light, those look way too dark as you can see here. But also this applies for selfies as you can see. So yeah, um, camera seems to have some issues with the ISO or exposure, need to check on uh, that, but daylight performance looks good. Um, so yeah, let's see how it does. And battery of course looks very promising with 8000 milliamps. Have used this phone for two days already, so have some stats available there and as you can see, the screen on time right now is forecasted to be 17 hours, almost 18 hours which is quite insane. Um, of course, I need to do further testing to get more accurate stats about that, but that's very promising. I'm still running on the first charge, by the way. I'm using this as a daily driver for two days now and I'm at 51%, which is insane. Um, the f I already discharged the phone to 0% and did an external measurement of the capacity. And actually the capacity of the battery inside of there is 7800, so almost on spot of the advertised capacity. So really large battery. Of course, you feel this, the phone is quite heavy, despite it's not too thick. But um, yeah, I think that's totally worth it for this amount of battery life. I'm really looking forward to see what the real final battery life will be on average. I'm expecting around three days there, three or even four. Oh, let's see about that. So it seems like the combination of a big battery, power saving processor and the AMOLED screen does work out for them. Great thing. Uh, by the way, I can't tell you how fast it does charge because for external measurements I can't use fast charging so I haven't fast charged this phone yet. It does support fast charging, it comes with a fast charger, but you will have to wait until the final review to know how fast it charges. So yeah, that's for battery. And I think we already reached the end of this first impressions video. So overall, pretty positive stuff there. Really no big cons or flaws about this phone. Of course, camera probably could be better. Um, they really should have left out the dual camera, which is unusable and focus on a proper single camera performance instead. But yeah, pretty much any phone maker these days uses dual, dual cameras, even if they aren't of much use. So let me test this phone further and stay tuned for the full review on this one. Thanks for watching, bye bye.